Okay, this is part two of our discussion on waves and vibrations. Uh, we picked off, uh, leaving off just some of our parts, just a quick review. Our wavelength would be from, um, take any point. So take a crest, go to the next crest, that would be your wavelength. Um, take a trough, go to the next trough, that would be a wavelength. Um, take the point where it crosses the equilibrium, right, going upward. Go to the next point where it's going upward, and that would be its um, wavelength. Make sure you wouldn't uh, just, if you are ever measuring wavelength, make sure you're not measuring only half of the wavelength, um, going from one point on the equilibrium to the next point, because that would only be half of the wave. Now we're going to talk about frequency, right, which we, we started to cover right towards the end. We know that frequency happens, uh, or frequency is a measure of how often something happens. So the frequency of you going to school is usually five days per week, right? Number of times something happens over a given amount of time, five times per week, right? The frequency of you brushing your teeth is most likely twice per day. Um, that is the frequency, how often something happens over a certain amount of time. Um, we can measure how many times a pulse passes a certain point over a given amount of time, and this will tell us our frequency. So the frequency is the number of times a pulse passes a fixed point over a given amount of time. Uh, if you swiggle, uh, or I'm sorry, if you wiggle a slinky back and forth and count that six waves pass a point in two seconds, what would the frequency be? Okay, pause and think about that. So six waves pass a point in two seconds. What would that be? All right, that would be three cycles per second. Three wavelengths pass a certain point every second. Or in other terms, that would be hertz, which is measure, or, um, abbreviated by HZ. Okay, we use the term hertz, HZ, to stand for cycles per second. How many wave cycles pass by every second? Right, so on the second page of your notes, hertz would be the next word that you would fill in. Okay. The period, right, is the time it takes for one cycle to be complete, okay? How long it takes for one cycle to be complete, right? The wave speed, we talked about our speed, right? We can determine how fast a wave is moving, right? What is the formula for velocity, okay? And this, this isn't necessarily going to be used in waves a lot by us, but to find any velocity would be distance over time. The distance it traveled over the time it took. That would be its velocity. And when we talk about most waves, they move very, very fast, right? The speed of light, incredibly fast, right? Speed of sound, not quite as fast, but still um, hundreds of miles per hour, hundreds. A right, couple other reviews just with wavelength and period, okay? What distance do we know about a wave? Okay, the wavelength will be the distance it would travel. Uh, and what about the time? The time it would take would be the period, how long it takes to pass by. All right? Sometimes waves will interact. Okay? Like anything, if two waves are interacting with each other, we have something called interference. Right? When two waves meet while traveling along the same medium, it's called interference. Sound waves can interfere with each other. If you take speakers at opposite ends of a room, they will interfere with each other. Light waves can interfere with each other. Right? That is called interference because they're interfering with each other. Okay, first thing we have is called constructive interference, right? So when two waves meet while traveling along the same medium, it's called interference. Just to review, so that would be your next bullet point you're filling in, right? When two waves meet while traveling along the same medium, it is called interference. Okay, constructive interference, right, is when two waves moving towards each other both have positive upward amplitude, okay? So what will happen when they meet? Okay, constructive interference is when two waves will add together, okay, the two waves are added together, they become one wave, and they produce greater amplitude, all right? So here's some pictures of what constructive interference would, would look like. If these two waves are traveling towards each other, the red and the blue, when they meet one another, okay, their interference actually makes a bigger wave, okay? Their energy adds to one another. It's constructing more, just like a construction site that is building a house. It is adding more to it. These two waves will produce greater amplitude. 
amplitude, how far it is uh, from the equilibrium to the highest point. So you can see that the green wave um, crest has a lot more amplitude than the red and the blue. And if you look and think about it in a number sense, if the red and the blue are the number one on the graph, when they're both added together, they go up to the number two. Okay, They would double up. That's constructive interference, adding more to it. Destructive is the opposite. So let's just say that we had one that had a positive or upward amplitude and another one that had a negative amplitude. What happens when they meet? So when they're the opposite, we have destructive. And you can see now, it's hard to see it, but if you look on the left, we have the red moving to the right, the blue moving to the left, and when they meet one another, okay, they cancel each other out. Destructive interference, okay, destructive interference is when the waves will add together to produce a smaller amplitude. The amplitude now was zero when the two waves on the left met. Okay, if you look at our sequence to the right, the red wave has a value of one. The blue wave has a value of negative two. So one and negative two. When they interfere with each other, you can see that the green trough ends up being at negative one. Okay, some of the wave is canceled out. If that were noise, it would make it quieter in that case. Destructive interference. But it's important to understand that sound waves do not look like this type of wave. A sound wave would be a compressional wave. Right? A compressional wave, not a transverse wave. Right? So there's a few uh, waves. You can look at this picture. Uh, I can na name different points. So if I said at point A, would there be constructive or destructive? I'm sorry, point I. Um, at point K, would there be destructive or constructive? Um, there's, a, there's various things you can do. You can look at these different waves. Would they add to one another or would they hurt one another? So just a real quick review. Right? If we look at point M, right, both waves have negative value at point M. They are both below the equilibrium. That would be constructive. There would be constructive interference at point M. Whereas if we look at point G, as in GOAT, G, both of those are positive in this case, but still constructive because they're both positive. Okay, if we look at point I, I as in ice cream, one wave has positive, the other wave has negative value. When they meet one another, they would be destructive. They would take away energy from one another. The same with point K. If you look at K, one is above, one is below, that would be destructive. So to review, constructive would be G, J, M, and N. Destruct destructive would be H, I, K, L, and O. Okay, wave spectrum. All right, when we look at our wave spectrum, we also call this the um, infrared spectrum. And a lot of times it is referred to as different types of radiation. You can see radio waves are much longer frequency than gamma rays. Visible light. If you look at the red end of the visible light and the purple end of the visible light, red has a longer wavelength. Purple has a shorter wavelength. Gamma rays have incredibly short waves, and they are packed full of energy. The more waves that pass by in a second, the more energy it has. That's why radio waves are not harmful to us. On the other hand, X-ray and gamma rays are harmful to us. They can cause cancerous, cancerous growths. Visible light, not harmful. Ultraviolet light would be what gives you a sunburn. It is harmful. There's more energy in ultraviolet than there is in visible light. The ultraviolet rays, rays are what's actually damaging your skin, not necessarily the visible light. As we fill in our uh, spectrum here, okay, gamma rays are the shortest, right? Gamma rays are the shortest, and both of these kind of go back and forth. But gamma rays are incredibly short, 10 to the negative 12th power. So we are talking 0 0.0000000000001, right? 12 zeros, 
Move it over 12 times. Move that decimal over. Gamma rays. That's how short those waves are. So they are the shortest waves. You, al you also want to add to your notes that they are the highest frequency. Gamma rays have the highest frequency. Whereas radio waves are the longest waves. They have the lowest frequency. And you can see on our bottom chart that the frequency is higher towards the right than it is on the left. Radio waves, very, very long, long waves. Also, when we talk about visible light, red light and red colors are longer waves than purple colors or blue colors. The color difference that your eyes see is because the light waves are a different length. And that is the, the small difference that our eye can sense. All right. Red, less energy. Purple, more energy. Gamma rays have more energy than X-rays. X-rays have more energy than ultraviolet. Ultraviolet has more than visible, and so on and so forth. The least amount of energy would be radio. The most amount or the greatest amount would be the gamma rays. Okay. Radio waves have a wavelength longer than a gamma ray, and you need to fill that in in your notes. Right, and the bottom part comes from a brain pop video. Uh, you'll fill that part in at a later time. Um, all in all, that is a summary of our, um, our uh, different wave types, our different types of radiation. I have one more video. Uh, you can see here it is a spinning light show. It starts out as a, um, a yellow, a blue, and a red uh, light on a fan. And you can see that they are all going to be um, started up, turning at once. You can see that they're separate colors at this point. Right? But with these colors on these different blades, they each have their own separate visible light waves. The red ones are shorter than the yellow ones, which are shorter than the bluish ones. And they bolted the different glow sticks to the fan blades. And she will turn the uh, fan on, and it's going to start spinning. Right? And it's going to ask you, okay, do you think it's going to look black? Do you think it's going to look white? Do you think it's going to look red because they're the longest waves? Okay, so we'll find out. She turns it on. When they all get blended together, they turn white. Okay, it looks almost white. You can still see a little bit of hint because they can't get it spinning fast enough. But when all of those color rays, blue, orange, green, yellow, purple, violet, all those colors get added together, it creates white light. And the light that we see and the light that lights up our world, okay, is white light. It all gets blended together. Um, here is just another example of um, a sequence that you might see uh, in terms of waves. <coughs> you may have seen this on a seismograph, uh, a seismograph with earthquakes. Seismograph to review is a uh, detector that senses the uh, seismographic waves that are in the earth after an earthquake. They can use them to sense uh, when they might be happening, earthquakes that is, how great they are, um, how active a volcano is. Uh, but these show up on a piece of paper uh, for the seismograph, and that is just another example of a type of wave. Uh, again, to review, uh, we went through our different parts of a wave, uh, the crest, the trough. We labeled some of those parts. We labeled what a wavelength was, uh, what the amplitude is. We also discussed the slinky, right, where if you compress the slinky together um, and when you wave the slinky up and down, it makes two different types. Our transverse waves are when you wave it back and forth and it looks like little hills. When you compress it together, um, that would be our longitudinal wave. We also discussed our uh, different types of radiation. We talked about constructive and destructive interference. Uh, we talked about a hertz which represents the cycles per second. Uh, and when two waves collide, they can have constructive and destructive interference. Gamma rays are the shortest. Radio waves are the longest. Higher energy, more energy inside of gamma rays. That's why they are much more harmful to us. Thank you for listening. Uh, that is waves and vibrations.